Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Ampersand Podcast, where there is always an and in every situation in life. I am your host, Aubrey O'Shea, and I'm so happy to be here with you today. Um, Let's get into it. So today what we're talking about is being broke and in your 30s. And when I talk about broke, of course, that has the connotation of financial insecurity, but also it brings about a brokenness in your spirit, in your heart, in your relationship status, in your in your mind. There is a lot of things that can be broken. Your breaking is a process for your fulfillment. It might sound weird, it might be strange when you really think about it, but your brokenness is a direct correlation to what will be poured into you. How God has to break you open so that you can be filled. But I'm telling you, being broke in your 30s, it is not an easy season. I've witnessed it firsthand when I was 25 and I was talking to a young lady and she was an artist, very popular nowadays. And a lot of you probably follow her on Instagram and seen her doing this and seen her doing that. But when we met, she was in a space of figuring shit out because as a singer, as an independent artist, you don't have all the necessary financial acumen you need. Is acumen the right word, y'all? Is it? If it ain't, I don't give a damn. Let's continue. So God allowed me to be in a space with somebody who was 31 when I was 25. And I actually came up under this young woman to be her executive assistant. During that relationship, I was allowed to peer behind the veil and see how her shows were put on, how she made appearances certain places, how she had to do this, how she had to do that but she did not have money. And it is one thing to not have money, but it is also another thing to be producing shows, creating albums, buying clothes, getting things tailored, getting the nails, the hair, the whole nine yards, but at the end of the day, you are going home and your lights are off. I was able to see a burgeoning artist who, whose dreams were way bigger than their pockets struggle. So I think God places me with people that and I go through the struggle with them because I'm not that type of friend that, oh, if you ain't got nothing to eat, baby, uh, well, I hope all is good. I'm going to go grab some of that Papa Do's. I hope you're good. No. Because half the time I ain't got it either. But if I do have it, we're going to eat at Papa Do's together. But if I don't have it, we're going to sit on this on this blow up bed as we did. And we are going to go through this damn thing together. And in, in further episodes, I'm going to tell y'all about the, the per, interpersonal side of me and this woman's relationship because we went through quite a bit at such a young age. But right now I'm staying on the topic of the struggle. So during the time of me knowing her, lights were off, slept in cars because she didn't have any electricity. I ended up loaning her money because uh, she said she couldn't find anybody else to help her. Now I'm going through, she's going through all of these things in her early thirties, broke, hungry, Let's not even go there. And I'm seeing this. And God is allowing me to see these things. And I'm like, damn, that's kind of crazy. At 25, I don't believe that I was even thinking about money. Mainly because I didn't have a, a goal in mind. I didn't have a purpose. But oh my Jesus. When you actually get to a place to where, oh, you identify a purpose. You identify a plan that you want. And you go towards that vision. Oh, when I tell you, God is going to give you a tree, but he will not. He will not build you a chair. God is going to bring you the bee's nest, but he is not going to hand you the honey. Baby, it's going to take a struggle to get the chair and it's going to take some pain to get the honey. 
Sometimes I sit and wonder, why does God take us through such a process to get a product? Why do you give us the vision and not provide the, the, the resources? Because so many visionaries will say, if I had the money, I would be doing this. If I had the finances, I would be getting that and be getting it done right. But there are people out there that are cheating the system. They are actively scamming making hundreds of thousands of dollars. I know people personally in my family that are making good ass money, but it is not coming in the upstanding way. So God often doesn't give people who are making fast money big vision. It's the people with small provisions with the big ass visions. So I'm just trying to figure out, God, why give me the vision without the provision? What you doing? It is such a process to get what you need. It really is. We go to Home Depot. Oh, it's easy to get lumber. But baby, who had to find the tree and cut that shit down? Like it, it, we have everything we need. However, it's going to take the sweat of our brow to get the finished product. And being broke in your 30s is not easy. Being in your 30s, having a vision, having a plan, actually putting in the work, actually doing the work, and you still broke is not fucking fun. But I know if I'm going through this, somebody out here got to be going through the same damn thing. So at this point in my life, I am 31 years old. I'm about to be 32 in a couple months. And with that being said, I'm going to run it down for you, the ampersand podcast, because the ampersand in my situation is you can appear successful and still be broke as a joke, because honestly, my life mirrors the life that I was blessed to be a warrior of at 25 years old. What I'm doing right now is mirroring is kind of in the line of what she was doing at 31. And it's kind of strange how God will put you in the place of your predecessor or who you should be studying or who you will, who your life will mirror. So you get a front row seat to see that, oh, everything will be okay because I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to that in her life because right now I'm in the valley. So let me run this down for y'all. I'm 31 years old. About to be 32. I am currently living at home with my mother. Now, I wish I was living at home with my daddy. Rest in peace. Because when you live at home with your daddy, in my opinion, it seems more like a, oh, okay, y'all. It's kind of like a roommate situation. Like, you have the, I have the idea that you're with the man, you're trying to taking care, you're taking care of your own responsibilities. He ain't taking care of you. But when you say, oh, I'm living at home with my mother, it gives for me, that impression comes off as, oh, your mom's taking care of you. Does she take, does she run your bath water and tuck you in at night? Bitch, no, she does not. The thing is, I got to live in my truth. I'm living at home with my mama, for God's sakes. And I'm just like, I'm ready to get the fuck out of here. But this is my reality. Now, does this have to be my reality? No. But the thing is, would I rather be homeless on the street or would I rather have a bed to lay in? Now, don't get me wrong. Ampersand, you can live with your mom and you can still be struggling financially. That's a real thing. And people do not understand like you living at home with your mom and you ain't, you ain't really got no bills. Nigga, why ain't you got no money? I'm going to let you know. In the industry that I work in, I don't get paid until 30 to 90 days out. Sometimes things happen to where I get paid instantly. I have a, a product that goes along with my with my cleaning business that I sell and I get money instantly. But then um, shipping comes into place. This comes into place. That comes into place. Also, like I said, I'm in the entertainment business. Sometimes I don't I do not get paid until 30 to 90 days out. So everything I do, I'm always putting in more work 
I'm always putting in work before I get paid. It never happens at the same time. Because if it did happen at the same time, if I got paid as soon as I finished working, if there was a schedule like that that was so tight and and succinct, I would not be dealing with financial insecurity right now. I would not. In my in years prior, oh, I was making thousands of dollars at the drop of a hat. The entertainment situation was going very well, very well. And I'll be dropping off thousands here, thousands there to my mother and be bouncing, doing what the hell I had to do. But now I'm in a season of drought and I really don't understand why God has me in a season to where I am planting, where I am pruning, where I am uh, tilling the land that I want to see fruit from. And there is no, there's, the harvest should come. The, you know, I'm, I planted this tree and I keep coming back to trees, but I planted this tree and seasons have passed and fruit should be, born, should be bearing from this tree about now. Where are my where are my apples? Where are my oranges? It's it's not here yet. Oh, they'll come. It sometimes it might take a season or two. A season or two. Uh, nigga, I gotta eat now. What's going on? It, it's it's crazy. But you know, there being at my mother's house, I cannot lie. There is a forbearance by being here because I do not necessarily have to pay rent on the first. I do not have housing insecurity to where I'm like, if I do not make this, I'm going to be out on the street. I don't have that. Granted. However, with this business, I do have people that work for me. And I just had to let somebody go because the people that I, my, one of my clients, a few of my clients have not paid me. So I'm st- one of my biggest goals in my 30s, I want a house. I want to buy me a house by 32. And I I know that seems very ambitious because, nigga, you've been living at your mom for a house for how long? How long, nigga? I've been living here for a long time. But I want to get my own place by 32. I want a house. Now, am I opposed to getting me an apartment? Hell no. I'm not opposed to that, but I don't want to be in the hood. But as soon as I get the money that that I'm looking for, I want to get my own place because... There is something about having your own space in your own place. You can do what the fuck you want to do. You are more, you know, independent and more responsible for yourself. And that's the space that I want to get into in my adult years. And sometimes I feel like I'm in between a rock and a hard place because I know God knows if I had the money, baby, I would have been gone, honey, gone. Now, so, financially, I'm in a space to where, baby, don't ask me, I, I can't, don't ask me for nothing. Baby, don't even ask me to pay attention. Just don't ask. Don't ask me for shit. Now, I was talking to my mother, and I was like, I feel really bad. And she was like, Aubrey, you are working. It's not like you out here just sitting on your ass. You are actually doing stuff. Ever since I have been living in my parents' house. I have been working. I barely be at the house, honestly, because I be out there moving and grooving, doing what I got to do. And she was like, you're working hard. I can tell you're working. You just haven't got paid for it yet. But I don't want to continue to be in this space. And I have friends that are doing big things. I have... um, I just I have a couple friends that just showed me that they moved into their own place. I know one nigga that I was fucking with. That nigga work at Golden Chick and he just got an apartment. I'm like, go my Golden Chick. How, how much is Golden Chick paying? And then on the, today, a nigga that I fooled around with just told showed me his place. I'm like, damn, is it that easy? How are y'all doing these things? And the weird thing is, the Golden Chick nigga. He was kind of sending subliminals, kind of low-key asking me for like money, like for the, cause he was like, yo, I need, uh, I'm about to move in and they're asking just for like a hundred dollars more. And I was like, congratulations. Like nigga, don't ask me for shit, man. Don't ask me for a goddamn thing. Cause I ain't got it. 
But you can understand my frustration when it comes to working very hard and not reaping the fruits of your labor. It's devastating. It's heartbreaking. And like I said earlier, I just had to let one of my workers go because I'm not getting paid like I should. Um, in a, in another uh, podcast, I'm going to talk about entrepreneurship sucks. And it is very true. And I'm going to detail how rough this thing is. Like, it, it, it gives me pause because I'm just thinking about, I'm kind of going back to that place I was last week because it was very hard. It, it's a devastating feeling to be a man, to be a black man in your 30s and not have financial security because that is the trope. Oh, black men make less money than black women. Black men are poor. They're this, they're that. They're not, they're not doing anything with their lives and blah, dee, dah. like I hear that and I'm like, that is not my M.O. I'm literally striving towards the life that I want to where I can actually support myself and a family or a loving household, maybe even have some goddamn kids. Because when I look at my dad and mom's situation, they were very hardworking people. My dad was an entrepreneur himself. He owned a construction company and he would go um, do tile and carpet and construction work, all of that shit. And he was making money, like money, money, had a safe full of money. And But at one point, my mother was the one who had the stable job and she was supporting him during his endeavors of procuring clientele. With that being said, I often see how we as black people, especially sometimes black women, black men too, compare our lives or the way we conduct our relationships to that of the white man and the white woman when they have certain advantages that we as black people do not even have now that might sound like an excuse but it is fucking true so we always say black men don't have this black men are incarcerated i do not want to be one of those people so by being financially insecure right now it brings about a feel, it brings about feelings of shame. I feel less than because I do not bring the bread to the table. And so much of our self-worth is tied into what we produce, what we bring. And I have learned to divest from, I'm learning to divest my self-worth from the job that I do, the money that I bring in, and whoever I'm with. But that is a difficult process to, to do, especially when you want to be able to belong in a society that, that praises men who make more than forty to fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year and drives a really nice ass car. It's not, it's honestly not fair. You know, and as an artist at heart, too, it's even it's even harder because either I'm going to matriculate and assimilate into this corporate structure that really does suck the life force out of an artist, or I'm going to choose the artistic path, the uh, entrepreneurial path and suffer. Um what do you do? Because both are heartbreaking at the same time. There's a quote that says, comparison is a thief of all joy. And when I tell you comparison has been sitting on my little shoulder for a long time, honey, it has. And my joy has been very compromised because of that. And it takes me out of a place of gratitude when I look at what other people have. And in this climate, in this way the world turns these days, you almost can't help it. Because people curate this idealistic life through 
pictures through 60 second vignettes of what you would deem perfection. But when I tell you, if we go back to the person that I spoke about the first half of this episode, she looked very successful on social media, very successful. And she still does today. But when I peered behind the veil, when God gave me the front seat to that experience, oh, it wasn't what it seemed. She appeared very successful on social media, but her bank account, I knew what that looked like. And it grounds me because now I see her and I I hear her because I'd be kind of social media stalking sometimes because we don't follow each other. We had a little falling out. Uh, It wasn't even really a falling out. We just had to go our separate ways. But that's another story for another day. But I see her and now the money is coming in. And now when we met, I was 25. She was 31, my age. And now that we are no longer together, she is 36, I believe. And I'm 31. And to see where she is now, I don't compare my life to hers. If anything, I'm encouraged and inspired by it. Because it lets me know that, oh, it's not, it's, it's all going to be okay in the end. And if it is not okay, it is not the end. Because you, I'm seeing how she's rejoicing in the fact that she has money. She's making six figures from an Instagram post because the work paid off. She is flying overseas doing this and doing that. And I'm just looking at, I'm like, it's great. Why was I a part of your struggle and and not a part of your success? Oh, because you had to go through your own struggle in your own season. But I'm like, God, why am I on my own? Why don't I have a midwife to carry me through my valley? Because I always find that I'm carrying people through their valleys. I'm like a midwife for the person's struggle in their valley. And I'm left here figuring this shit out on my own. God, where is mine? Who going to rub my goddamn back? Oh, so in this season that I'm in, I'm like 31. Ooh, baby, you... You're you're kicking my ass. You're kicking my ass. But I just have this, by being able to view her success from afar now, I'm I'm understanding that it's not going to always be like this. There has to be a different change. There is going to be a day. There's going to be a day and a time to where I will be turning the keys to my new house. It's not going to be an apartment. It's going to be a house. And I am going to, I'm going to be so relieved. There's going to be a time that I'm going to have so much money in my account that I'm just going to go through my contacts and just give it away. There's going to be a time that I won't have to think twice about going to the store and getting groceries. Mm Mm-mm. What do you need? Oh, let's go. I don't even have to think about it. Money and security will be non-existent. In my future, right now, that's not the case. Right now, my bank accounts are in the negative. Right now, I don't really know the next day I'm getting paid. (laughs) Right now, I am still (laughs) at my mama house. But one day I want to be able to give my mama the dream kitchen that she wants. I want to be able to encourage young men and let them know that your valley is, this is temporary. It is. And that's not to say that there aren't struggles on the other side of this reality. Because everywhere you go, there's going to be 
an issue. They're going to be a problem as long as you alive is going to be an issue. There's going to be in a different tax bracket. There's different things to consider. But that but I'm I'm going to be so grateful for the fact that I won't have to struggle like I'm struggling in this area of my life. Because being financially insecure creates a lot of things in your life. It creates stress. You your body doesn't operate the same way it would if you had what you needed. You, it, it can affect your appetite. It can affect your mood. They say money don't make you happy. Oh, yeah, the fuck it do. Give me $100 right now. I'm going to be a little happy. I'm going to have a little skip in my little step. It doesn't, money doesn't sustain happiness, but it can make you happy. It Money doesn't give you joy, but it surely can make you happy. Okay, joy is a deeper reservoir of certain things. We'll talk about that in a different place in a different time. But um, I just know where I desire to be. I know where I will be, but I just, in this interim of time, Tracy Ellis Ross had a quote. And I used to watch some of her YouTube videos back in the day before she got the part on Blackish because there was a time in her life where she wasn't working a long while. And she was just like, you know what? I'm just going to put myself on YouTube. I believe those videos are actually still up. And I will watch those videos and be very inspired because when I tell you, I've been going through, I've been going through feelings of inadequacy for a long time when it came to where I wanted to be in life. Because I've always seen further than where I was. And I always feel like, damn, when is it going to happen? Or damn, when am I going to really be able to lay back and kick up my feet, you know? So Tracy had this quote, and I hold on to it. It says, may the space between where I am and where I want to be inspire me. She also said, do the next indicated thing. And this is something that has set with me for a long time, because sometimes you don't know what to do. In the grand scheme of things. But she said, if it's nothing but getting out of bed, or if it's brushing your teeth, or if it's sending an email, or responding to it, do the next indicated thing. Because when you do the next indicated thing, it will lead you to the next thing. And that will lead you to the next thing. And before you know it, you're moving through life again. So sometimes in life, when I get to a space that I feel that I am paralyzed by fear, because procrastination shows up in my life as fear, personified in a way, because I don't know, I don't know what to do. Like when I had to let my worker go and I had to figure out how to get payroll. And I was sitting outside of a pawn shop to pawn my MacBook. This happened this week, y'all. To pawn my MacBook. And I'm figuring out, I bought this MacBook a couple of years ago and it cost me $1,400. I'm like, I'm a, I can at least get $300 something so I can, pay, I can make payroll, whatever. And that man told me we can give you $150 for it. And he was being generous. I was like, I know you fucking lie. Yo. When I tell you that you when you when you be so tired, you don't even have tears. And then also you don't even feel like you're you don't even feel like it's worth it to even cry because you you got more you got to worry about the shit you gotta do anyway. That's a real thing. That's a real, real thing. And you might ask, did you pawn your computer? I didn't have to. And I felt like asking my cousin for money because my cousin just told me a couple of days earlier, if you need anything, just let me know. If you got to make payroll and you don't have it, just hit me up. And I was like, I don't want to ask my cousin for nothing because earlier my mother gave me a, a, a loan so I can do everything that I need to do because she was like, I know you're going to get paid just here. And I was like, OK, that works. But I wasn't going to ask her for anything, for not a dime. So... 
I was figuring it out. I went to another pawn shop and they was like, we can't take it because you got a little crack right here in the screen. I was like, damn, because I thought I would get more money somewhere. But right beside that place was like a check cashing place or a title payday loans someplace. And I was just like, you know what? If this place doesn't work, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to go and see. And it was pouring down rain, too. I was like, Lord Jesus. So I went in there and they got me approved for more than what I even asked for which was a blessing. But I say that to say, even in the dark times, there are silver linings to being broke and broke in. There really is because I find that I could have a pity party about what I'm going through or I could examine what I'm going through and how I'm going through it with a magnifying glass and see where God shows up for me. Because in that check cashing place or the payday loan place, he hooked me up with the right person, a very sweet brother. And I can look at that as like, oh, okay, things just happen. But I am sensitive enough to the act, to the actions of benevolence of God to know that, oh, I'm being taken care of even through my valley. I am not blind to the grace that is given through the storm. I'm not blind to that at all. Am I frustrated for what I'm going through? Hell yes. I'm very frustrated. I'm very hurt. And I'm very tired. However, I see how God is showing up for me in the interim. Through the valley. And sometimes I even say, is there a God? What is this? But it's just the little things. I think there's a a word in in the Bible that talks about this man was in the woods or something like that in a desert place. And birds were bringing him food. And then I think about the manna from heaven. How they were in the wilderness and God supplied enough food for the day. And people wanted to save rations of it so they wouldn't have to go back out and get it the next day, but it's spoiled overnight. And I think about how sometimes God gives us manna from heaven. And people look at that as like, oh, I want the manna from heaven. But do you not know it is only provisional for a day? If you walk by faith and if you live by faith, You may only have enough for the day. That's why you could worry about tomorrow if you want to. But those but tomorrow has its own sets of grieves and woes and blessings and grace. I'm learning to continually because I learned this years ago because I have been struggling for a long time as choosing to be. I didn't choose this shit. It's almost like sexuality. You don't choose to be gay and you do not choose to be an artist. It is something that is endowed upon you. And some people choose to take up the calling and some people choose not to. And for me, it is painful not to do it. Literally, it is. I've tried giving it up, but it is so, it grieves my soul. It's like a death uh, if I don't do it. I've been struggling a long. I've been through this for a long time. I'm just like, Lord, when I'm going to see the other side. However, it has taught me years ago, like manna from heaven. You have just enough. And now sometimes you go through mountain peaks and you're like, oh, I'm making good money from what I'm doing. Like, woo, if it could just last like this to where I could just make sure everything is all right. Boom, another valley. Manna from heaven. And I'm learning to take my ration for the day. Because I see how God shows up for me. And the the manna came from heaven every day at the same time. And they got what they needed. They ate and were filled. But it spoiled that night. And they could not save it. It's something else. You got to look at the pattern of God. And one thing that really took me off course with this pattern thing is because when you get too comfortable with the pattern that God has established with you, because if I know like, oh, 
God has never let my phone bill expire. It, something always swoop, swoops through. God has never let this happen. He always swoops through. I kind of get a little worried, but I, I just stop worrying about that. It's, God will switch up the game on you. God has a pattern, yet he's not predictable. I don't believe that God likes to be predictable. It's boring to him. And I'm just like, okay, why you got to play all these games and stuff like that? But I believe that when you get too comfortable, there's no need for any change or no need for growth. And like I talk about the breaking, if we're used to being dropped in a certain way, we're going to start moving our body to where it, don't, it doesn't cause any damage. To where then we're dropped and it's like, ah, I don't feel anything. But if he drops you on your knees... How are you going to respond? How are you going to react? I have been honestly afraid of the breaking. I have been disgusted with the breaking. I've been perplexed by it. I've been sorrowful about it because breaking is such a a painful seemingly unnecessary long process and sometimes as you're breaking you're being repaired in other places too and the whole situation is so confusing and it's draining and it's a lot for instance let's talk about the repair and I know this is going on for a long time, so I apologize. Um, but this is a long podcast today. Y'all can listen to it. Uh, split it in half if you want to. Or maybe you should come back for another part of it. You know, that's what I think I'll do. So we talked about the breaking. And there are so many breakings in so many areas. Because we can talk about being breaking, broken in relationships. All of the good things. But we're kind of on the monetary tip right now but um next episode we'll talk about the repairing because that is a painful process as well so thank you for tuning into the ampersand podcast where two things are true at the same time you can be broken and you can be healing at the same time you can be you can be broke and look successful at the same time and even though it is painful Oftentimes, it is a part of the purpose. So, so many things can be true at the same time. And that is what I'm living through in my daily life right now. So, what is your ampersand today? What is your ampersand concerning brokenness? Think about it. Next week, we will talk about the repair and how the repair is very integral. Or integral? I don't know how to say it. Very important to your well-being and your health. But at the same time, it is very, 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 very painful. So we will talk about that next week. I have been your host today, Aubrey O'Shea, with the Ampersand Podcast. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week, okay? Or I might just release this as a two-parter and it ain't going to be next week. So uh, tune in, tune in. And if this was too serious for y'all, I don't know. I have more fun, more lighthearted story twines later on in the week. So I ask that you be blessed. You stay good and always look for the ampersands in life. Bye-bye.